Before I begin, let me quickly explain why I examine the ancient deities. Today's example, Shuwala, will lead us to understanding the name Huwawa, alternatively known as Humbaba, the being who the god Enlil assigned as a terror to human beings. The hero Gilgamesh and Enkidu defeated this great enemy. When Humbaba looks at someone, it is the look of death. Humbaba's roar is a flood, Ilu. His mouth is death, his breath is fire. The description continues by mentioning the paws of a lion and a phallus of a serpent. The Wa element from Huawa is left obscure. In fact, there is no etymology for Humbaba or Huawa. That would be one of the many reasons I do the work myself. The truth is out there. I've also noticed the father of Huwawa, who is also the father of Gilgamesh, under the disguise of the word. From Gilgamesh and Huwawa, version A, to Utu. I never knew a mother that bore me, nor a father who brought me up. I was born in the mountains. Utu is neither a father nor a mother. Huwawa was surnamed the Terrible, a monstrous giant of immemorial age. Remember Im is clay tablet. Huwawa was assigned by Enlil, raised by Utu, Shamash, aka Zu. An epithet is an alias, and aka in Sumerian, means fleece. If you are not sure what I mean by that, Ur means wolf. So the terrible monstrous giant was raised by Utu, the sun, justice, truth god, Truth? Just a moment. Utu Shamash, otherwise known as Lugal Banda, also known as Zu. Utu is the godfather of Humbaba, Huwawa. Lugal Banda is the godfather of Gilgamesh, another tyrannical giant. This thing is playing both sides of the fence and this expansion is a product of the Empire, meaning regardless of how the story ends, the child of the Godfather is always successful. They are multiplying a god under different names. Shuwala is a great example. For example, Shu, Su, Zu, Sin, or Sin, all of which are synonyms. In fact, I'd say it was the root cause of synonyms, the god of dividing language.
the god of division, he who divides the body of language. If you hang around, you will see what Pi really refers to. Sumerian Akkadian is a divided language, but the later terms combine and serve to increase the original language. It's actually increasing the amount of meanings, and with each step, the original meanings become more and more obscure. This is why the scribes continue to use Sumerian. From Shuwala, we also learn that the Akkadian language is still being used by the priesthood in 2000 BC. It is critical to understand that students cannot truly learn about themselves unless they learn about others as well. My mind opened when I decided to cross the boundary stone. The oldest presently known mentions of Shuwala from the Ur III period, one of which mentions the staff of temples of this deity, as well as Alatum, Alani, and Anunitum. Shuwala was the protector goddess of Mardaman, modern Besetki, Iraq, a city in northern Mesopotamia, assumed to be culturally Hurrian based on personal names of its inhabitants, for example, Nakdam Atal or Nerish Atal. A number of kings take on the name Sin, a variant of Shu or Zu. Shuwala was venerated there especially in the old Babylonian and Mitanni periods. She is clearly a variant of Ishtar, but under another name. The threshing floor has moved to another location. To further my notion, there is currently no older evidence from the city itself, but it is assumed that her cult had to exist there in earlier times, as it already had a supra-regional importance in the documented times. I think that proves my notion to be correct. If Utu dwells within Ishtar, then Sin dwells within Shuwala. The city already existed during the reign of Naram Sin of Akkad. No evidence regarding the worship of Shuwala, postdating the Assyrian conquest of Mardaman, is presently available. A temple of the Mesopotamian medicine goddess is attested in the city, in documents from the reign of Tukulti Ninurta I but it cannot be established whether it replaced a pre-existing temple of Shuwala. While a terracotta relief of a naked woman, which most likely had a cultic function, either as part of a ritual or as a depiction of the goddess, has been excavated at Mardaman. There is no evidence that it was a depiction of Shuwala. The name Gula can mean cursed voice. As you will soon see, 
The name does indeed relate to Shuala, indicating that they are synonyms. Shuala, directly labelled as of Mad Man, is present in the description of a Hurio Hittite festival of Shaushka of Tamaninga, a city assumed to be located in the Upper Euphrates area, found in Hattusa. She was celebrated by cultic performers, labelled as Hurrian singers in Hittite texts, in the offering lists known as Kaluti of Hebat and her circle. I wonder if that has anything to do with the Eshipu, also known as Kalu. She appears between Nababi and Eya in the Yazalakea Sanctuary. She appears between two unidentified goddesses. The figure representing her is designated as 57 in modern literature. The Apkalu statues were positioned in five sets of seven around the home. During a Kalu or a Shipu exorcism ritual, five sets of terracotta figures in groups of seven. The winners write the history books, a quote from Winston Churchill referring to what he did to India. If you can understand what happened to India, then you can understand what happened back then. India became a threshing floor. Oddly enough, Mr. Churchill was praised recently, 57 years after his death, and the peace sign is not a peace sign. He said he didn't know why he did the sign. The sign is V, meaning to divide and conquer to bend light, but adding the two pillars transforms the V into II, seven. The two always equal the third. The two always combine to be thrice great. Shuala was also worshipped in Ima, while no evidence for the existence of a temple dedicated to her in the city is known. She is present in an offering list, and in two descriptions of rituals, all of them written in Akkadian, having root in Sumerian. Even though the goddess is agreed to belong to the Hurrian part of the pantheon of the city, she is mentioned in the instructions for the Kisu festival of Dagon. If that's not Apkalu, I'll eat my bloody hat. The festival of Kisu most likely took place in Shatapi, a city possibly located further south. During this celebration, songs dedicated to her were sung. The precise meaning of the term Kisu is left uncertain, making the nature of these celebrations and roles of specific deities in them difficult to ascertain. I'll be the judge of that. Offhand I can see that key is breath, or earth, or voice. Su is voice among a plethora of other meanings, so the name would describe the Hurrian singers in relation to the hymns and prayers of a later exorcism ritual. I 
remind you again, the original hymns and prayers were altered, and magical phrased verses were added to the narrative. You know this simply as poetry, which would be rapping. From Edgar Allan Poe While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. As you can see, Ki and Kish relate to Kisu. Both combined relate to the threshing floor. What does it mean by threshing floor? The Sumerian culture was the first threshing floor, which caused a revolution. The people who left would have created a new civilization, a new threshing floor. A sort of scapegoat state, a site of great lamentation. In modern times, this would be Ukraine, South America, or the Middle East. The land whose surface was conditioned to act as a threshing floor. Where are the peace talks taking place? Pop quiz. Do you know the difference between Eastern dictatorships and Western democracy? Ironically, the former is honest. It has been proposed that the presence of underworld deities indicates that it represented the periodic death and return to life of a deity, possibly Dagan's spouse, but this remains speculative. That would be very similar to Gulveig and Odin, which I will present in the future. This is definitely a reformation of the Eshipu exorcism rituals. It is possible that the rituals of Shuala and Dugur involved Abi, the offering pit, connected to the cult of underworld deities. That would be the Pit P ritual, the Pit of Locusts. Shuala also played a role in the Kisu festival of Ishara and Imar's city god, Ninurta, son of Enlil. She is attested in Hurrian theophoric names from Alaka, Nuzi, and Chagar Bazaar. In biblical studies, the term Shoal is sometimes assumed to be a Hebrew derivative of Shuala's name. According to Assyrianologist Louis Filou, a connection between Shoal and Shuala is possible but not certain. Edward Lipinski regards the connection as proven. Clever boy but relies on the assumption that Shuala is one in the same as Alani, which is wrongfully said to be wrong, due to the excuse that they appear as two distinct deities in texts from Ur and Hattusa. That would be like saying Inanna is not Ishtar, but we know that they are. I believe Falu and Lepinski were correct. The W sound is not natural in Sumerian. Wa is a sign that is normally read as Pi. For example, the Pit P ritual. Sumeriograms, Geshtug, P, Tal. 
the phonic values are Phoenician is derived from Sumerian, hence they are Sumerian values that are P, Pi, Wa, We, We, Wu. I do wonder if they have been inverted. They must have been, because there is no W sound in Sumerian. That would be B, by, ma, me, me, moo. Nine times out of ten, when I say things like that, I'm usually correct. The etymology is an orthographic borrowing from Sumerian. Geshtug. Ear. Geshtug is a Sumeriogram of Osnum, also meaning ear. P is an Akkadiogram of Panum, bushel. I quickly remind you that Utu dwells within Ishtar. Luke 11.33 No one who lights a lamp hides it away or places it under a bushel. A basket, meaning blocking light. I disagree entirely. Utu dwells within Ishtar, who appears to have a variant named Shuala. Ishtar originally held the bushel, the basket. Utu is concealed within her, under a bushel. The bushel here being Ishtar, the cup and ball trick. Revelation 2, 28, 29 And I will give him the morning star. 29 He who hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I have an ear. P. Ear. Bushel. The Pit P. Ritual would be the Mishpi ritual. Rituals involving washing of the mouth, Mishpi proper, used on the first day, day one, to cleanse the statue of all traces of human contamination in the production of the idol. And the opening of the mouth, inscribed Ka Uda, Akkadian Pit P. I wonder if that is the great Kaluda bringing the statues to life. The washing of the mouth leads to the opening of the mouth ceremony, literally bringing statues to life. This was definitely used on Pazuzu. This is why I could not find Pit in Sumerian, so I look for Mish. I couldn't find that either. But what does Miss mean in modern language? Bad, badly, wrong, wrongly, misconduct, for example, misinformation. As mentioned, there is no Miss in Sumerian, but there is Mush which is connecting to the series of exorcism tablets, revealing a bond between Zizuru, meaning magic circle drawn with flower, not salt, flower, connected to the net of Mamet, the Maklu tablet, the Mishpi ritual, the Pitpi ritual, and of course, the Mushusu Ritual Tablet. The warnings come after the spells.
so the mish p relating to the pit p p meaning ear mush meaning snake reptile tongue in relation to leave depart go out to kill with venom and poison and p meaning ear would mean that mish p is the serpent tongue the tongue of poison the mouth of a poisonous decree sue is officially hand handwriting responsibility referring to the divine decree a flood a god of dividing language the language itself can be defined as a flood are we not all sinking in it wa is ear or bushel la is abundance luxury wealth etc la to penetrate pierce force away into the broader meaning of la is cursed I render the name Shuala, the hand of the spoken curse, the hand of the spoken curse. We can learn so much more if we stop seeing language as a border.